Hello, I'm Chris McLeod. I'm one of the electrophysiologists here in Rochester at Mayo Clinic. I specialize in complex electrophysiology, so complex heart rhythm disorders, but I'm also boarded in adult congenital heart disease. I'm the director of our adult congenital arrhythmia clinic, and we work closely with our adult congenital cardiologists for all cases. And so specifically for uh, this talk for the next few minutes, we're going to focus on Fontaine physiology and the arrhythmias that are associated once Fontaines are created. Um, there really is a wide spectrum of disorders when we speak about a Fontan patient. And not one Fontan patient is the same. So some of this is going to be fairly generic. Um, oh, you know, the, the prevalence, as, as most of you probably know, uh, for having a Fontan is very low. Um, but because we have such a, a big referral practice to our adult congenital group, and um, a lot of those arrhythmia, a lot of those patients end up with arrhythmias. Our adult congenital arrhythmia clinic is very busy with Fontaine arrhythmias. The um, if one looks at the overall prevalence or likelihood that a patient with Fontaine circulation is going to develop an arrhythmia, it's very very high. It's not as high with the newer type of Fontans, um, but I'll explain it to this way uh, to most of our patients, in this way to most of our patients. So the electrical system is crucial for the functioning of the heart. Electricity has to conduct from A to B for the heart to beat. And wherever there is a scar in the heart, that really interrupts the flow of the electrical impulses through the heart. And if the electricity can't get through that scar, it's obliged to go around that scar. And this is atrial flutter. Atrial flutter is the most common atrial arrhythmia in patients with any type of Fontan circulation. So the electricity can't get through these scars, and it goes around and around in sort of a never-ending loop or re-entrant circuit. And those are flutters. So for the older uh, Fontan type of surgeries, where there was a lot more suturing of atrial tissue. Um, there are a lot more scars, and therefore a lot more atrial arrhythmias, a lot more atrial flutters. The newer atrial uh, fontans, where the atrium has been essentially resected by and large, and a conduit, a tube, placed from the superior vena cava, sorry, from the inferior vena cava to the lungs, this total cava pulmonary anastomosis, patients are much less likely to get flutter, atrial flutter, because that portion of the atria has been removed. The um, way in which atrial flutter, which is the most common arrhythmia for Fontan patients, presents, how, how patients experience it, is also extremely varied. It can present as just a uh, a subtle change in the exercise capacity. I'm not feeling that well. I used to be able to run up that flight of stairs and now it's really I'm huffing and puffing. Or rarely the patient can decompensate. Very rapid heart rates, feeling like they are about to black out, need to go into the emergency room. And so there is a wide spectrum, but by and large it affects the efficiency in the heart and most patients with atrial flutter need treatment and that's to, the treatment is aimed at getting rid of the flutter. Other, another important consideration in patients with Fontan circulation and atrial flutter is when that atrium is not in regular sinus rhythm, blood flow is sluggish through those chambers and blood clots, in a, blood clots can develop in that sluggish uh, environment. And so always need to decide on what to do with blood thinning in those patients, warfarin, coumadin, or some of the new agents. To get rid of the atrial flutter, the standard go-to treatment, at least here, is typically ablation. Patients are young, and we would prefer to avoid those more toxic medications that aren't all that effective. Those are the antiarrhythmic drugs like Sotalol, Ticacin, and even Amiodarone that work partially but often stop working after some period of time. The ablation results here are very good. We're looking at about an 80% chance or even higher of getting rid of that arrhythmia. 
The one issue with, uh, with Fontaine atrial ablation is that other flutters can develop in the future. But it's very often a safe ablation because it's localized within the Fontaine circulation. You're not crossing over to the left-hand side, so no risk of stroke by and large for most of these ablations. And so that would be our go-to for an electrophysiologist in our adult arrhythmia uh, congenital clinic. So that's a, a short sound bite of, of how we approach the situation. And thanks so much for your attention. Thanks for watching.